Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. In this video, it's another SQL tutorial, and we're doing something slightly different. We're going to be having a look at how we can create a sample of data. I've jumped over to SQL Server and we're going to be looking at the customers table we have within our database. So in this table we have various pieces of information about our customers. Now in this table it contains almost 2 million records and we want to be working with a sample of that data. Uh, we don't want to be running queries against 2 million records unless we're looking at the performance side of the query. So we want to look at how we can create a fair subset of this data to actually work with. And we're going to be going through some different techniques of how we can create that. Now the simplest of all would be if I was to just drop a top on that result set and then I could simply return the amount of results that I wanted. But the issue with the top is unless we apply some other techniques, we're not really getting a random data set, shall we say. We're just simply selecting the top amount that we require. So like I say, in this video, we're going to go through some techniques of how we can more randomize that data and create a fair sample result set for us to work with. So the techniques we're going to be looking at are the entire function, which we have introduced in a previous video. So if you're not familiar with Windows functions, I will put a link to that video in the description below. We're also going to be looking at nested CTEs and working with aggregate functions as well. Again, I have got videos covering those on my channel. We're going to start with Entile. Entile is great to have a play around with. And what Entile actually does is divides our data into effectively tiles, which you can think of like groups. So simply what we're going to do first of all is divide our result set into groups. So out of this almost two million rows, uh, we're going to want to return we're going to work with say a thousand rows so simply what we're going to do is write the keyword end tile and then in the brackets is how many tiles we want to divide our result set into then we use the over clause now because we're using the over clause we have to use an order by clause in this case we're going to be ordering by our customer id in our customers table and then we're going to simply select that information from our customers table. So if I go ahead and execute that now, so that's just taking a few seconds, I'll just give that an alias as N. So we can see we've got our customer ID, uh, and if I just scroll down the results grid till we hit about a thousand, we can see there are different values assigned against the end tile. So there's different effectively groups that they belong into. So what we've effectively done is divided our customer IDs into groups based on the ordering of the customer IDs. Then what we're going to do is drop those results into a CTE. So above the select statement, I'm just simply going to write with CTE as open brackets and drop our original query into the brackets or parentheses. Now with CTEs as well, you don't actually have to call them CTE, it's just a commonly used name that when we start working with SQL, we always use CTE. I can call that anything I want, I just need to make sure I refer to that correctly. So we'll call that N initially. So if we just select all from N, just to show that we've got the correct results showing, that will just take a few seconds to run and we can see we've got the results set as expected. If I just expand that column out, we can see here customer 592,657 is in group 297. So there's going to be a thousand groups. So Entile is going to take our data and divide it into a thousand effectively equal groups for us. Now what we're going to look at is nested CTEs and how we can use those. 
So simply after the original CTE, I'm just going to put a comma and then we're going to give this uh, a name. So we're just going to call it top customer. Again, the keyword as notice with nested CTEs after the comma, we don't write the keyword with that's only for our initial CTE, not when we're working with nested CTEs. And we're going to write we're going to open and close parenthesis again but what we want to do with this second CTE here I'll just clear the results grid so it's a bit clearer is we're going to be selecting our max customer ID so we're going to be introducing our aggregate function here and we'll just alias that as cust ID and then we're going to be grouping by N now that I think about it, N was quite a silly name, so I'm just going to rename that to number, just so the table and column have a different name. There we go, and then we can group by N. And what that now allows us to do is we can select from our second CTE called Top Customer. So if we go ahead and write that now so we've done our original CTE and then a nested CTE which is where we take the results from the original and um, we're grouping by the entire value and then we're returning the maximum customer ID so at this point I'm expecting a thousand results because we divided them into a thousand groups so if I go ahead and execute that now that will just take a few seconds to execute and we can see in the bottom right hand corner we've had a thousand rows returned. So as we'd expect we've now got a, let's say a more randomized data. It's not completely random but it's more randomized than just working with the top function alone so that will give us a better sample of data to work with. Now what we're going to do is simply join back to our original customers table to get the information from that table. So I'm just going to simply add an inner join to our customers table and we'll give these aliases as C1 and C2 and we'll be joining on c1.custid and then in our c2 table, our original customers table, it's still referred to as customer ID. So then we should retrieve the correct information. Now we don't need the cust ID anymore, so we're just going to drop c2. So we want to select all from our customers table, uh, but we're going to be using these CTEs to join on. So again, I'll just hide the results grid so it's a bit clearer. So we've got our original CTE, we're dividing our customers into a thousand even groups. We're then taking the maximum customer ID within that group. And then what we're doing is we're joining back to our original customers table based on that customer ID. So I'll just go ahead and execute that query now. I'll just scroll down so we can see the original query. And we've still got a thousand rows and now we've got a sample of data that we can work with. And then last of all, what we're going to be doing is dropping this information. So within our select statement, our final select, we're just going to write the keyword into, and we're going to be creating a new table called customers sample. So we're going to select all the data from our original customers table. We've got the ten, uh, sorry, the thousand rows that we need, and we're going to be dropping that into our customer sample table. So if I go ahead and execute all that query now, so this is like a select into is like a, a considered a bulk insert statement. And if we go ahead and look at our select from our customers sample table, we've now got a thousand rows in there, a bit more randomized than using the top function and we've got a sample of data that we can work with. Now we can start looking at queries on this just subset of the data rather than running, having to run queries against millions or even billions of rows. So we've gone through a couple of examples there of how we can create a sample set of data. We've gone through Entol, nested CTEs, working with aggregate functions, We've also looked at select into and joins. 
So I hope you have enjoyed that video. I just wanted to do something uh, a little bit different. So working with a sample uh, set of data is always beneficial, even if you're looking at the performance side of things. It's always better to have a look at a sample set of data. You don't want to be running queries that are going to be going for 10 minutes and then you need to make changes and then it runs for 10 minutes again to find out if, there, if you have improved that query. So do let me know in the comments below what you thought of that video or any other videos you'd like me to cover. Check out the other videos on my channel, there's a lot of great content on there. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button to be made aware of when videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.